What's up, people, and welcome to a video about gatekeeping, because people apparently want to bring it back up, and now it's turned into a big thing again, even though it shouldn't be, but, you know, we have the same arguments every other week. But, uh, yeah. You'll hear, you'll, blah, 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 blah. you'll hear everybody use the term gatekeeping in the sense that you want to keep people out, which is probably about as far from the truth as you can get when most people say gatekeep. So my interpretation, which I do believe to be the correct interpretation, is that gatekeeping means that you love something, i.e. a hobby, sport, whatever, and you want to keep out people that would, at least in your eyes, destroy that hobby, right? So let's say somebody new were to walk into a store and say, I want to learn about this thing, right? And you go, okay, I'm going to teach you about this thing. Now, one of two things can happen. They'll either say, I like this thing, or I don't like this thing. And that's where the whole gatekeeping conversation comes into play. Because the people that say, I don't like this thing, decide to stay with the thing and try to change it into something that is completely unrecognizable or goes against pre-existing rules or conditions or what have you, right? Now, a normal person would probably just not stick with the thing if they don't like it, right? But you do have people that their goal is to come into the hobby or whatever and change it because they don't like the people that like the thing. Right? So, at the end of the day, when people say that they want to gatekeep, they don't mean that they're trying to keep people out. What they're trying to keep out are the bad actors or people that seek to infiltrate, for lack of a better word, in order to change things. Uh, you see that a lot. In fact, I've seen many instances where people flat out admit that they don't like the people that like say 40k so their goal is to make it worse for the people that like 40k they flat out say it right now of course those same people are going to get pushback from the ones that like the hobby and that's when all the crying and moaning and whining starts oh they don't like me oh they're bullying me blah 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 fucking blah when you came in starting trouble to begin with all these arguments that are continually going on every other week, every month, every year for the past God knows how long, five plus years, all start because somebody says, I want this thing, right? And then fans of it go, no, you can't do that. Here's why. Oh, well, if you don't like it, then you're a bigot or a racist or what have you. No. And... I've already brought this up and talked about it before, the whole female space marine argument that is just like beating a dead horse all the time for the past how many years? At least 10. To my knowledge, Games Workshop has said no female space marines. And then every other week you'll see somebody say, why not? Why can't we? Well, here's why. Okay, yeah, but that, that doesn't count. Lore doesn't matter. That doesn't make sense. Who cares about canon? They'll come up with all of these arguments or these rebuttals that have zero substance when shown, you know, that Games Workshop isn't exactly inclined to do this thing just yet. Not to my knowledge. I mean, they ha you would think if they were going to do it, they would have done it by now, right? They've been in business long enough. But I think... And this is probably one of the more concise definitions of gatekeeping that I've ever read. And it took me a minute to pull it up because I know it was making the rounds all over different social media and YouTubers and Facebook, blah, blah, blah. But it, it makes sense. So I'm going to pull this up so we can look at it. So this was from Thor Odinson. And it reads, on the topic of gatekeeping. When people talk about gatekeeping, we don't talk about physically keeping people out of stores, stomping on miniatures, or keeping them from buying miniatures. That's absurd. 
What we're talking about is ex- exercising our rights as consumers to let the businesses we patronize know exactly what we want out of the services provided and what we don't want. And sorry, but gnashing your teeth over gatekeepers isn't going to make me value my rights as a consumer any less, and I will continue to exercise those rights wherever and whenever I feel like exercising them. There you go. If you like something, if you like the way it is, and people come pounding on the door saying, no, I don't like it, I want you to change it, you're supposed to do what exactly? Just go, okay. Do whatever you want. No! Obviously, you're going to fight back against the people that are doing that, right? If somebody goes into baseball and says, I want to play this game with a basketball, people are going to look at them like they're stupid. Plain and simple. He continues. Moreover, complaining about gatekeepers is a grossly disingenuous argument. It takes two to tango, after all, but I don't see people like this complaining about woke hammer or their ilk. No, strangely, you only have an issue with one side of the argument, not both. Also true. The quote-unquote woke hammer people are the ones that keep this argument going in perpetuity. Every other week. Every month. Every other month. Every year. It's the same things over and over and over and over and over. And the same people going no, 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 no. So who keeps it going? The people that are constantly whining about it? Or the people saying no? And assuming you came here because you're on the opposite side, go ahead and answer that question. Because the answer is going to be, you are. Or those people are. Not the people that are constantly telling you no. Let's continue. Let me put it in simple terms. If Chudhammer, which is what the left side of the hobby calls anybody that's, you know, right of far left, were to disappear overnight and never say a word again, there would still be strife and discord in the Warhammer community. Because Wokehammer would still be there stirring the pot. True. They'd continue demanding female space marines until they get them, including a Horus Heresy retcon, which they've demanded repeatedly. I don't see how that would happen, considering that's... 54, 56 books that they'd have to go back and rewrite, but. And then once they get what they want, they'll shrilly demand more and more changes because they've made it abundantly clear they despise major aspects of the setting of, <clears throat> of the setting of the 40k universe, its lore, and multiple factions within it, and won't stop making demands until the setting is absolutely unrecognizable. Again, going back to if you hate this thing so much, why do you stick around? Is it to cause trouble? Is it to piss off people that love the thing? Which is it? Or do you only like certain parts of the thing so you're going to pick and choose as opposed to the people that love all of it? <sighs> so, let's continue. So they'd absolutely keep it up as people like Bitshammer have been doing it for years, only they'd be louder and more obnoxious because nobody would be there disagreeing with them and telling them, no, you can't have that, and here's why. Perfect point. Again, it's the same people bringing up the same arguments all the time. And if that person has 10 or 12,000 followers or subscribers or what have you, then people are going to see it and go, hey, what about this thing? Or the same people are going to keep it going or new people are going to keep it going. It never stops. It just, it's never ending. Now, however... If Wokehammer were to up and vanish overnight, if we never heard from Bits, Pants, Serb, Shay, etc. again, if they all as a group decided to go find some other franchise to ruin, all we'd be left with is people talking about the lore, painting models, or complaining about Space Marines getting nerfed, tank commanders being crap, Eldar still dominating, why models are so damn expensive, etc. True. The people that don't want the thing to change aren't the ones starting the argument. Why? Because they're already happy with the way it is. So what's there to argue about? All that's left is to talk about the actual hobby. <clears throat> In other words, we'd get the previous 30 years of Warhammer community discourse before Wokehammer showed up. So again, who's causing the strife and discord in the community? Because it isn't the people responding to the instigators that started it. 
Logically speaking, if an argument would end when one side is removed from the equation, and if that argument didn't even exist until that side showed up, then that side is the one instigating matters. I just said that. The same people causing the same arguments and getting angry when people say no constantly, all the time. Who's the problem here? Because they're going to say that the people that don't want things to change are the problem. And nobody is saying that change is bad. If Games Workshop up and decided, all right, we're going to, I don't know, give call 16 hands and four feet. They're probably going to write it in somewhere and then you get whatever. Spider call. But they haven't done it. Why? Because it doesn't make sense. It also goes against pre-existing rules and conditions set within the lore. That, according to the other side, doesn't even matter. I don't know how you can have a strong franchise without lore, but they seem to think that you don't need it. Or, what's the word they use? Fluff. They call it fluff. I I wouldn't call, I don't know, 200 or something books fluff, but it is what it is. And GW is very much aware of the online conversation and who is doing what. They are certainly aware, for instance, that Bitshammer tried to pull a Karen, digging up an 18-month-old post to get a GW staffer in trouble, possibly even fired, a month before Christmas because that employee was opposed to FSMs. They're well aware that Pantmonger doxed a GW employee and tried to get him fired. Again, these are all Twitter people that nobody gives a shit about, but this guy wants to talk about himself. They're well aware that doxing and harassing people outside of Twitter seems to be a common pastime among Wokehammer, as Dr. Fatass can attest to when Wokehammer doxed him and then called who they thought was his boss to try to get him fired. Or as this person who had their real name, picture, home address, email, and phone number posted can attest to. I brought this up in some of our live streams that the people that say that the gatekeepers are the bad people are some of the first ones to say that they're going to hurt people break people's property, uh, force people out, say that people aren't wanted, uh, talk as much shit as the other side, but at the same time want to say they're the good guys. Make it make sense. And they're certainly aware that the people who want them to make significant changes to their lore and business model are also the same people who proudly brag about how they want to drive existing Warhammer fans out of the hobby. Again. Just said that. They do it all the time. All the time. There are also the people who talk about how much they'd love to physically assault people when they that they dislike at game stores. You're offended at gatekeepers? Where's your ire for people talking about how much they'd want to hurt other gamers, telling other gamers to kill themselves, or very heavily imply that they want to shoot other gamers? Your priorities are beyond skewed if gatekeepers are your problem, but not people talking about how overjoyed they'd feel if they could physically attack someone else, telling them to kill themselves or calling them Nazis, and then subtly indicating, because saying it straight out would get them instantly banned, that their solution for those 40k Nazis, like Major Kill, is to kill them. Again, these are the people that want things to change, right? These are the people that want to make things better for the hobby, right? These are the people that say they're on the right side of history, right? These are the people that think that diversity, equity, and inclusion are the be-all, end-all to uh, Games Workshop success, right? So, who's actually fighting here? The people that are so-called gatekeepers or the people that the gatekeepers are trying to prevent messing up something that people like? So, yes, the gatekeeping quote-unquote, is absolutely worth it. Unlike Disney, Star Wars, Marvel, and DC Comics, etc., GW isn't run by ideologues. It's run by actual business people whose primary motivating factor isn't producing agitprop, but making money. Games Workshop likes money. They love money. In fact, they're charging you $70 for pieces of plastic that are about yay big. They don't give a shit what your politics are. <laughs> they give a shit, can you pay us? Can you afford our stuff? Oh, you can't afford it? Too bad. Here's the price. 
So unlike with Star Wars, where no amount of fans voicing their dissent could ever change the direction there, making it unequivocally clear that there are significant numbers of fans who have a serious problem with those demands and are wholly against them does have an effect. Now here's another hypothetical. Let's say Chad Studhammer, aka Chud Hammer, gets everything they want. What's the end result? That Warhammer 40,000 continues to retain its uniqueness and remains an interesting, engaging setting rather than being run through a strainer removing anything and everything that made it unique until it's politically correct enough for the woke mob. I wouldn't call it the woke mob. I would just say people on the left. I would say progressives, but that's just me. That Games Workshop continues to see financial success rather than repeating the utter financial catastrophes suffered even by giants like Disney as Warhammer 40,000 collapses in the same fashion that other, larger IPs like Star Wars, Marvel Comics, DC Comics, Doctor Who, Rings of Power, The Witcher, etc. have collapsed. That Warhammer 40,000 doesn't become like any other one of those franchises that you say you used to love, but not anymore? He brings up a good point. Disney is hemorrhaging money. Marvel is hemorrhaging money. The Witcher went to shit because they wanted to argue with Henry Cavill, who happens to love The Witcher, about the way things should be. Uh, Doctor Who is... I don't, I don't even want to talk about Doctor Who at this point. Star Wars uh, it is what it is. Rings of Power was shit. It, 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 it's all bad. Oh no, that sounds awful. Gatekeeping, or consumerism, is absolutely necessary, especially in a situation in which the company isn't run by ideologues like Bob, Bob Iger, that's Disney, Kathleen Kennedy, also Disney, Jennifer Salk, or so on, but actual business people pursuing profit, which I think I saw something saying that the guys that run Games Workshop are a bunch of older British dudes that hang out and drink ale together. You're never getting what you want as long as those people are in charge. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> By business people who want to make money off model ranges like, say, Black Templars or Death Corps of Krieg and not see those sales slump because woke busybodies are telling customers that they're fash if they buy those models. That's another thing. I have seen many, 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 many. And in fact, all you have to do is go look at Sig Marxism, which is ugh, Sig Marxism is cancer. But that's something to discuss another time. You will see people bring up, is it OK if I play Black Templars or does that make me too much of a fascist? Or can I play as Death Corps of Krieg or am I too much of a Nazi? They literally believe this, that by playing with little pieces of plastic, first of all, neither of those things are based on whatever the fuck it is they think they are, will make them somehow lesser in their peers' eyes. And that's what they need. They need that validation. They need that support. They need that attention from their peer group of like-minded simpletons that will make them feel better about their choices. Anyone can homebrew any models they like. True. Nobody gives a fuck about headcanon. Nobody cares if you want to put little woman heads on type of, a top of tiny little space marine dudes. Go ahead. You want to give them cat ears? Go ahead. You want to fucking, I don't know, dress them as maids? Go ahead. You can do any of that. Nobody cares. Just don't try and say, hey, I want this to be a real thing now because I like it. Well, most people aren't going to like it. Anyone can kitbash any models they like. I personally don't care and have on multiple occasions offered suggestions on how to kitbash FSMs and will play Bits, Pant, or whoever because I'm sure they only act like complete twats online and don't have the nerve to behave the way they do online in person. Most people don't. In fact, that's one of the wondrous joys of the internet is that people can sit there and talk shit in an anonymity because they know they're not going to get hit. And in fact, I have this just tiny gut feeling that all these people that say that they're just going to assault people because they said something mean or they did something they don't like probably wouldn't last in reality. But that's neither here nor there. Female Space Marines, Trans Marines, Hello Kitty, Necron, Smurf Marines, bring whatever you like. I'll gladly play against anything and everything unless you're modeling for advantage in a tournament. Then I'll call a TO and rake you over the coals. In fact, most of those kit bashes can't be played in official tournaments, but who gives a shit? Most people play tabletop for fun anyway. So when I or others talk about gatekeeping, we're not talking about preventing people from playing or enjoying the hobby, the way the crazies and the screenshots above talk about it. We're talking about raising our voices in opposition and letting GW know unequivocally where we stand, which most people do. I do. So when you demand that the lore and the entire character of the setting change, 
When you demand that the decades of books I've read and collected be invalidated and that the hobby I've enjoyed for 30 years of my life be changed into a mouthpiece for your current year political beliefs, because you can't stand the existence of any form of fiction which doesn't constantly reaffirm your political beliefs at every moment, sorry, but I'm going to have a problem with that and I'm not going to stay quiet about it. So yes, both the floggings and the gatekeeping will continue until morale improves. And then he hashtag the Warhammer community. So long story short, all that stuff that he just said is about right. You see most of these issues from people, as I've said before, on the left. These are the people that continue to per perpetrate the arguments in perpetuity and you know, get mad when people talk shit back. It never ends. It's it's a constant, well, ugh, I hate saying this, it's a culture war, I guess, which of course has ingrained itself in every single fucking facet of everybody's lives at this point. Schools, politics, online, gaming, tabletop gaming, Warhammer, Star Wars, all of it, all of it has been just dragged into this stupid fucking culture war which boils down to politics. Left versus right. Woke versus conservative. And honestly, I'm perfectly happy to stay in the middle. You know, I can't stand the extremes of both sides. And all I see on the people that are trying to change the hobby that I love and other people love is it's coming from the left. Sorry, not sorry. It's the truth. So... When pe again, when people say gatekeeping, they're not talking about keeping out newbies. They're not talking about keeping out new players. They're not talking about keeping out trans people. They're not talking about keeping out non-binary people. They're not talking about keeping out gays and lesbians, blacks, Jews, Muslims. They're not talking about any of that. They're talking about keeping out people that want to ruin the hobby and have said that they want to ruin it on purpose. What's so bad about that? Why don't they ever get mad about the bad actors on their side that are constantly pushing the same arguments? Why? Because they're on the same team. Meanwhile, if I see somebody if I see somebody come into a games workshop dressed as a Nazi, I'm probably not going to talk to that person. Which according to them, you would see that all the fucking time in real life apparently. Because anybody that disagrees with them is a Nazi, fascist, bigot, whatever, racist, homophobe, transphobe, all of it. When in reality, it's not true. Reality is very different. In fact, all of these arguments that are continually pushed online on social media every single day by the same people, you never hear it in stores. Because nobody wants to talk about that. Everybody's there because they love the hobby. You don't hear people arguing and screaming and ranting and beating each other up because somebody wants, you know, female heads on their models. So there you have it, everybody. Since people want to bring up gatekeeping again, like it's this thing that, uh, I don't know, is going to ruin the hobby. Uh, I say otherwise. So till next time, gatekeep your hobbies.